Brad, what, what are some what are some things that you were not happy about last year that you really want to focus on with your guys this year? Yeah, when you look back and, and you self scout yourself and, and you look what you need to do better. Um, obviously, uh, third down defense, and there were some specifically. Uh, towards the back end of the season, third and long situations, especially extra long, uh, you know, was an area that uh, historically, if you look, we've been we've been really good. And we were not, you know, not anywhere close to the standard that we need to be at, um, you know, and, and it cost us, you know. And when you give up third downs, you extend drives, you know, and extended drives leads to points. It leads to uh, less opportunities for the offense. Uh, so obviously that was that, that's going to be a primary focus again. You know, the year before uh, in 22 uh, was sort of our best year ever in third down defense, and there's a correlation to, to how well we played as a defense. So we need to get back there. Brad, those tackles. There's some cross training going on now that Josiah is out for the year. Now, do you feel about that group collectively that they'll be able to replace that loss? Yeah. No. I. You know what? Obviously, when you when you lose a player. Um, you know, they, some other guys have to step up. I mean, that's and that's the reality of sport. That's the reality, uh, and we've dealt with it every year here uh, at some position or another. I feel really good. If it was going to happen out of position, that's probably the one to happen at, um, because I think the experience that we have up there, uh, defensive line wise, the the quality uh, of players that we have um, allows us to to overcome that. Uh, and we've got a bunch of guys that uh, can play multiple spots across the front. Uh, and I think that's going to be good for us, too, uh, defensively in terms of uh, being able to be multiple. So um, like anything else, uh, do you want it to happen? No. But is there a silver lining in there as well? I believe so. Coach, you guys, have, you guys lost some guys in that linebacker room, but gained some pretty good ones as well. Can you talk about the leadership that Pop's bringing with his experience and just the linebacker room in general? Yeah, you know, when you talk about the linebacker room and you talk about experience and leadership, um, you know, I think you've got to, specifically if you're talking inside linebacker, you know, the first person you go to is Derek. I mean, and, and as long as derek has been here and he understands our system, um, and he's been really good for Pop, you know, in terms of being able to, uh, you know, essentially translate our defense, help him uh, grow within. Because every time you change uh you know, systems, like, you, you, you have to get adjusted, you know. And what you don't want, uh, you know, is a, is a really good player that is playing slow because he's thinking, you know, we've, we've got to get to the point where um, all the guys on defense that are playing, you know, they, they sort of do it unconsciously uh, so they can play fast and they can just play ball like they know how. So, um, you know, to have Derek there, Obviously, uh, Pop's shown what he can do uh, in this league and in, <clears throat> in college football in general. Um, so excited to see that. Excited to see uh, a guy like David Rayner uh, continue his progression. I thought he got better uh, each and every game uh, throughout the year uh, and was playing at a, a really good level for us last year. Um, you know, I think he's got more command of the system this year. Um, you've got a guy like Alex Fari. Uh, that can play inside now as well uh, and outside. So, you know, he knows how to play sort of in that field apex, but he also has a lot of skill set uh, that fits that inside backer position. Uh, so I feel good about that room. I feel good that uh, we've got, you know, solid old guys with a lot of, lot of reps uh, in college football. And then you've got some young talent. Uh, that, you know, the future is bright in that room uh, that are going to be able to learn from those guys, you know, fast, long, athletic uh, guys, and so, um, which will also help on special teams. Brad, what did you all like about Christian scoring, and what are your expectations for him? Yeah, well, I mean, what do we like about Christian? You've, you've got a guy that's long, he's athletic, uh, he knows how to play the safety position, he's played it in the SEC. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, playing in a system like Alabama, uh, you know that he knows how to adjust to a lot of different coverages, checks, run fits. Um, so that's not going to be something that was going to overwhelm him, and it hasn't. Um, so he's been able to, and personality-wise, he's come in and he fits with that room. 
You know, um, again, you talk about the inside backers on the previous question. The safeties is another group that uh, you just feel really good about, you know, in terms of having, you know, Zion Childers, Jordan Lovett, Ty Bryant, Christian Story. Like, you got four guys that are SEC safeties. They've played and been really successful in SEC games. Um, so, again, you, it gives you the opportunity to be multiple, um, you know, in what you do. And it also allows you to absorb, uh, you know, when, when an injury occurs within a game or maybe it's a multiple game deal, you've got the ability to absorb that. Uh, depth is always important. And to be able to have uh, the ability within a game to keep guys fresh so that you don't wear out through a game, uh, it, it's a huge advantage for us. Coach, uh, Ty Bryant from Frederick Douglass High School. Well, that was his progression. Really good. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and when we saw it last year, you know, I, and, and I'll, I'll readily admit I thought Ty played at a level that I didn't anticipate Ty playing as a true freshman. We knew he was a mature young man. We knew he was conscientious. We knew his work ethic, all the things that we loved about him. But to be able to step up uh, in the moments that he stepped up in uh, – was huge, and, and, it, and it's a testament to him. It's a testament to his work ethic. He's taken another step, you know, this spring. I think there's a confidence and command in his game. Um, he's bigger. He's stronger. Uh, he's still really fast. So uh, a guy that we're really, really excited about. Brad, Mark mentioned playing more sticky coverage cornerback. Uh, just how do you feel about that group entering the season with obviously Max Leap away? Yeah, you know what? I mean, obviously – uh, you know, there are things that we have to do to, to continue to uh, improve on defense, continue to uh, adapt, you know, sort of in the in the changing environment and, you know, being able to, to play some man to man, be able to get sticky, you know, on those outside edges. Um, obviously, uh, I think Max has put himself, he's had a really good offseason, put himself in good position. Uh, and I think we've got good competition opposite. Um, but it's early in camp right now. Obviously, so uh, a lot to lot to be seen. Uh, what I'm looking for is guys to be consistent. The nice thing is we have a lot of bodies uh, that don't have to take all of the workload. We can distribute it across, uh, you know, with guys like Jansen Dunn and J.Q. Hardaway and Nasir Addison and D.J. Waller. Like you just think, and then you throw in true freshmen uh, in there that have that have done really some good things throughout summer and the first two days of practice. So um, it's going to be a really, really good competitive uh, room and uh, really excited to kind of see how it all shakes out because that's the one position I don't know. There were times last year the secondary was doing their job, right, but the front not getting enough pressure on the quarterback. The sack's numbers were low at times. So with the unit, that's going to be probably as good as anyone in the SEC in, in pass coverage. How important is it? No, and if you get more pressure on the quarterback, it could certainly bring your defense to another level. Yeah, you know, it's it, we talk about it since I've been here. They all tie together, right? And um, it, it's fine. I, there were times last year that we, we would get sort of plenty of pressure. We would miss a sack. Um, you know, the, the South Carolina game jumps to, to mind. And we got – we had – two opportunities on the very first drive to get off the field on third down. One, we lost leverage in, in coverage, something that we shouldn't have done. It should have been off the field. We were walking into a sack. Uh, and then two, we had a missed sack, which then led to a, a big third down conversion. So there were breakdowns on, on all sides last year at times, and that's why it's so important that they work together. Obviously really excited about the front that we returned because um, – like anything else, I, I think people – interceptions, turnovers, sacks, a lot of times they come in bunches. They don't – it's just not always super consistent. Um, but if you – from a purely statistics, and that is what it is, like this was – the defensive line and, and what they did last year was the second most sacks since I've been here, the only behind the Josh Allen year, and it was the most tackles for loss that we had since I've been here. So, like, they were disruptive up front. Obviously, when we return all those guys this year, you need to keep that production going up front. Um, you know, and then you, you mix in, uh, you know, being able to play sticky, 
you know, in stickier in coverage at times, being able to make some plays um, on the back end. And then when you have a chance to be at the quarterback, uh, you've got to be able to finish, you, you know. Got, you've got two kids in there, Silver and uh, Walker, could play, can't Yeah, we've got Silver, we've got Walker, we've got Oxendine, we've got Ripka. Like, I think... Obviously, I think everybody in this room understands the impact that Dion has on a football game. I think people don't necessarily realize how well guys like Keyshawn Silver, how well Trey Ripka played last year, how well uh, Ox played it, it, the jump from two years ago for Ox to last year, and then this year his weight's back up to where it was when he was uh, – you know, before the injury and as as powerful as ever, um, you know, you have Khalil Saunders who makes plays, you know, big plays for us, and he's big and athletic. And, I mean, this is as good of a cumulative front, you know, as we've had. And then you throw in young guys and you throw in a guy like, uh, you know, Gerard Smith in there and Kendrick Gilbert coming back off of uh, injury, you know, from last year where he was sort of uh, – you know, one, he was a freshman, two, coming off a shoulder. You know, he's stronger. He's already, you know, made some flashes in some of these early practices. So you've got depth there. You can roll those guys. You can keep them fresh. Um, so, yeah, that's exciting. And then, obviously, you know, the position we haven't talked about is that, you know, that outside linebacker position. And, you know, to be able to return J.J., who, uh, you know, there are times that he can just dominate a game and he can take over. He understands that this is the year that he needs to do that consistently. It can't be just be one or two games. We need that consistent uh, force presence from him. Um, and then we'll see, you know, who can uh, who can rush opposite him. Right. Hey, folks, we got, I'm sorry, we've got to uh, uh, cut it off, get to our next uh, part. Right, thank you.